What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I know I've been super sporadic with videos since my move down here to Chattanooga, Tennessee. And I've been doing my best to try to get some videos out and kind of keep you guys up to date with how everything's going with the shop, with the projects, with a little bit of life in general, um, with some upcoming plans. And the last few episodes have just kind of been updates. And I know sometimes those get boring. Sometimes people who are more interested in what's going on in the automotive end of my life uh, seem to like these updates. I appreciate all of you guys with the support. Um, even when I think some of these episodes are pointless, your comments and messages are greatly appreciated. Uh, which brings me to this episode. I don't remember where I left off in the last video since it seems like it's been so long. Uh, but I have the pallet racking and bottom workbench all painted, all assembled, uh, went and got plywood and a good piece of three quarter inch thick MDF that I've painted and polyurethaned uh, to work as the, as the um, workbench and got it all assembled. Um, putting it together alone was a bit of a trick since I've cut the uprights down to just under 12 feet to fit underneath the trusses. Black was the move. I'm super stoked on that against the black wall. I still have yet to paint more of the shop black, but getting the back wall painted meant I could start getting things done like this pallet rack that I wouldn't have to pull away from the wall to paint it later. I've got some lighting overhead here. That gives me some good light here. I painted everything black, the underside of the plywood for the shelf and the underside of the one by sixes that I used as just like support help. But that's three quarter inch plywood too, so that's plenty strong enough. I'm not gonna be putting engines or transmissions up, up there. Moving on to another shop update or life update, car update. If you follow me on Instagram, you've heard already, and I meant to put this out on YouTube since I, I talked about this in a previous episode, I think two episodes ago. I backed out of SEMA. It's something I really didn't want to do, but unfortunately taking the Sentry to SEMA with everything I have on my plate and everything that needed to be done on this car in the amount of time before SEMA was overwhelming. And immediately once I made the decision, I, I almost followed through with taking it to SEMA simply because I'd put another episode out saying I was going to do it. And I didn't want to blow smoke and then back out and have this become like some sort of pattern, but the car's on airlift management. I was gonna have to pull all that out and redo the car in Acura yet again. And it was on me to pay to get the car out to Vegas. And I needed to buy a daily driver since I sold a daily driver and I've since sold my van. So I didn't have anything to haul my trailer with. So I wasn't even gonna be able to do it myself to save on costs if I even had something to do it with. So I backed out. It was gonna be a dream come true to have a car at SEMA. There's more stuff than just the air management I wanted done on the car to make it SEMA ready and just the logistics of getting it out to Vegas and it was just gonna be too, too much. So I have pulled out. Um, huge thanks to AccuAir again. I talked with the guys there. Uh, we may still work on a project in the future, which is awesome. I greatly appreciate their support. Um, but if you were going to SEMA, unfortunately the Sentry will not be there. Didn't want to let anyone down. I'm bummed out myself, but it feels like a burden has been lifted off of me because now I can breathe a little bit. But I do have news about that week. Um, that week that I was planning on being out out west in Vegas for SEMA, I have now moved into a different trip that same week. I'll talk about that trip more in another episode uh, once more details fall into place, but I'm gonna be flying out of town probably in the next two weeks, the last week of October, first week of November on a pretty exciting trip. So I'll fill you guys in on what's going on there. But the last update of this episode, I finally bought another tow rig. I did sell the van. I kind of sold the van prematurely. I totally forgot the market that we're currently in for used cars and especially used one ton trucks. And especially, especially if it's a used one ton truck with a diesel engine in it. So I sold the van. Uh, my friend John from Virginia flew out to get it and drove it back for um, a guy that he works with, wanted to um, build it into like some sort of like live-in van for travel and whatnot. So hopefully that, that turns out to be a cool rig for him. I miss it sorely because now I had to borrow a friend's truck to just go get sheets of plywood for the shelving units. And the Diplomat, I haven't quite decided what I want to do on the Diplomat yet. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I have come to terms with uh, selling it or possibly putting it on bring a trailer. 
since I just rolled 29,000 miles on that car and it is a cream puff. It's perfect in almost every way. And I think Bring a Trailer would be a great platform for that car since it'll be put in front of more people that are probably looking for a time capsule, all original Mopar 80s luxury car. So I might go forward with that. I know that's a bit of a process and you gotta wait. There's a, there's a pretty big queue of cars that have to go through there. But late last night, again, scouring Marketplace, I found a truck that had been listed two hours previously to when I found it and immediately contacted the guy that had it. Drove two hours to Alabama today with my friend Tyler Freeland, who lives right down the street from me. So huge shout out again to Tyler. We went down to Alabama, about a two hour drive, and went to look at this truck and made a deal and just got home with it. And I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Cause I know, I know these reveals, it's fun to be like, ooh, what did I buy? But I know, just on with the show. On with the show already. All right. I don't know whose idea it was to put a fluorescent light bulb right by the door. Awesome. All right, guys, it is another OBS Aero Nose Ford F-250, 7.3 turbo diesel. This one's a power stroke. If you guys remember my last OBS Aero Nose I had, it was an IDI truck, non-turbo, 7.3 with a five-speed manual. That one was a four-door long bed dually two-wheel drive truck that I did get from here in Chattanooga, Tennessee while living in New Hampshire. My friend Mason Gavin helped facilitate that. And that was a great truck. Non-turbo with the 24 foot enclosed trailer was just brutal over the road. Any of you OBS Ford guys out there who have had a 6.9 or an NA 7.3 truck know exactly what I mean when you've got a trailer behind you. This particular truck has lived its life in Alabama. It spent time over the road all over America, but resided in Alabama. For a Northeasterner like myself from New Hampshire, to find an OBS truck that doesn't have an ounce, and I mean an ounce of rust anywhere on it, on the body, underneath, cab mounts, bed mounts, bed rails, cab corners, rockers, bottoms of the door, windshield seals, rain tray, it's 100% solid. All original paint, all original truck, highly optioned with the factory 16 inch Alcoas. Um, it wasn't steel wheels with the hubcaps. It was a, an option truck from the factory, cold AC, hot heat, this one is an automatic, but as I just mentioned, it's a 95, so it's got the power stroke in it, which means it's got a turbo. Now my dually had a bank sidewinder kit put on it at some point back in the 90s. It might've even been put on in 1993 from the dealer when it was ordered, I don't know. But what I do know is that turbo wasn't working, whether or not it was bearings or some other issue. Um, I ended up taking all that off and doing an NA air box and putting it back to uh, an original spec IDI truck. So the story of this particular truck was it lived on a farm for the first part of its life, um, hauled a horse trailer, a fifth wheel trailer. It's got a fifth wheel ball on the bed. Uh, the bed's still super filthy. I haven't touched that yet. Um, then I think under its same owners, they mounted a bed mounted camper. Some of the brackets are still on the truck here. Uh, and they hit the road and used it as a mobile home uh, vacation truck and went all over America in the truck. It's just got over 200,000 miles on it, and most of those miles were highway miles and always resided in the south, so it stayed in great aesthetic condition. Then at one point, it ended up in a younger kid's hands, and then that kid traded it to another younger kid who is now selling it, uh, who I dealt with to buy the truck. Uh, there was a lot of small issues on the truck that they had just not fixed and had let go. Uh, the starter solenoid had gone apparently ages ago and the kid I bought it from and the kid before him were starting it from under the hood by turning the key on and then jump wiring the starter solenoid to the constant power to crank it over like every time. So when I ended up purchasing the truck, Tyler and I went straight to an O'Reilly in the town in Alabama we picked it up in. They had a starter solenoid in stock. This year truck is on the fender, not a starter mounted one, it's under the hood. It was like $15.99 and it took us four minutes to replace it. So now you can just turn the key and start it. So that was easy. We did that before we even left Alabama. Uh, the shifter 
was all broken. And as you guys know, on these trucks, the overdrive button is on the shifter. First of all, let me, let me just interject here. There's not a single crack in the dash of this truck. Even all my northern friends from New Hampshire who've had these OBSs know that just a few years of sun will give you some cracks in these dashes. No tears in the seats. Even the bolster on the driver's side is not torn yet. It's got some stains, needs to be cleaned up. The steering wheels on all these old OBS trucks all fell apart. All the stitching on the, on the, the weather cover always came apart. And so this has a cover on it. And to be honest, I haven't taken the cover off yet. The steering wheel might be in good shape if this cover was put on it years ago. And all the stitching seems like it's in good shape. Standby for steering wheel cover removal at some point. But the dash. It's got the factory radio still. AC truck. When I drove the truck, it wouldn't lock up into overdrive. And that was an issue I was having in the van. And that was kind of freaking me out because I didn't want to buy another truck that might have lock up or overdrive issues or just automatic transmission issues in general. Um, and so it wouldn't lock up. The end of the handle here on the shifter, this is a different one, but the original one was broke right off and hanging down and all the wires were hanging out. And the kid said that his buddy had had it looked at by a mechanic and they thought it was that overdrive button. And so I kind of took his word on that. When I drove it on our way to O'Reilly after I purchased the truck to get the starter solenoid, I was messing with the button and was able to get some sort of connection uh, fitted back and it did lock up into overdrive. The kid did have another shifter, thankfully. It is missing the end cap, which is common, but we did have another shifter. So in the parking lot of the O'Reilly, uh, after we did the starter solenoid, took all the plastics apart on the column here, got the toggle out and got all the plastic off, got the arm out and then got the new arm in and plugged in. And the whole two hour drive home on the highway, it ran amazingly. Overdrive button works. So we got a few things, a few crucial things done in that parking lot before we even left Alabama. This is the original shifter. As you can see, it is worse for wear. But this right here, for us Northerners, this is what's insane. The rockers and the cab corners. Look, look at how solid this is. In the bed. The bottoms of the doors here. You can kind of tell that like a farmer owned this. This is a 90s thing for sure. This extension tip with the little turn down. My grandfather hauled a fifth wheel horse trailer when he had horses when I was a kid. And he had a brick nose. He had a bull nose 69 and he had a brick nose 73 IDI truck. And he had almost an identical exhaust tip on his truck where it extended beyond the truck just a little bit and then turned down. Gets your exhaust out and away from the truck and out beyond the trailer you're pulling too. So you're not blowing potentially like rich diesel soot all over uh, the nose of your trailer. So I actually like that. That's like as 90s as it gets, in my opinion. The polish Alcoas, get, I'll get that tip all polished up, little 90s flare on it. So as far as I know, this is one of the earliest years of keyless entry uh, with the key fob for the door locks um, and the panic button. I'm not sure if they were doing this before 95. Some of you guys may know if, if not 95, uh, this was one of the first years for sure. Uh, that was right around the time when they started doing a lot of the keyless entry um, stuff with these trucks, with the American trucks. So that's pretty cool. I haven't checked yet. I haven't even pressed it yet to see if that even works. It'd be really cool if it does. Let's try it. It does. It works. That's awesome. That is so cool. I hadn't tried it yet because I didn't want to get locked out of the truck on the way home. But being able to start it from inside the truck. Yes, sir.
All right, guys, well, that's going to do it for this episode. Just another quick update on what's been going on here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. So, so excited to be back in another OBS 7.3 powered Ford. Uh, real excited to kind of dive into this and make it a good tow rig, but a good daily too. And just a project. I mean, this truck is, uh, these trucks are escalating in value every day. And I'm just, I was kind of sore about getting rid of the dually. I sold it for less than it was really worth. And I'm just happy to have waited and been patient enough to turn away from a few trucks that may not have been the right ones or maybe they were too much money. And I'm so excited to be in this truck. More updates on this truck coming soon. Uh, next episode will probably be really soon. We'll probably be cleaning this truck up. I mean, this thing really needs a deep cleaning. Really got to get my buddy Aiden down here. He almost stopped by on his way home from Orlando from detailing my friend Mike's NSX, uh, Divine Media down in Florida. Was going to stop by Chattanooga to detail the Chrysler. Uh, but maybe I'll have to get him down here to work some magic on the Ford. That would be pretty amazing. Maybe the Diplomat too, before that possibly goes on Bring a Trailer. But that's it. Next episode will be cleaning this up probably. Uh, hopefully getting it prepped and ready for hauling my BMW 700 down to Turkey Rod Run at the end of November, which is Thanksgiving weekend. I had the Corvair down there in 2019. Uh, it'd be really cool to get the 700 down there this time. Uh, tentative plans. Those plans were weighing on whether or not I had a truck, which now I do. Now it would just be about getting this thing prepped and ready in time uh, to get that thing down there. Stay tuned for more Diplomat updates. I've got a lot of parts coming in, hopefully on Tuesday. Tomorrow is Columbus Day, so uh, maybe Tuesday I should be getting a lot of ignition parts in. That's been kind of dealing with a misfire once we've got a lot of humid and rainy weather. I think I've got some plug wire issues, but I'm redoing everything. I'm gonna do cap, rotor, plug wires, plugs themselves, uh, coil, Gonna do a fuel filter, uh, just throw the works at it, get it running better again, and prep that thing uh, for possible sale. It's been an awesome daily though, I really enjoy it. Thank you so much for the support. I hope to see you guys somewhere soon. Until then, I'll see you guys in the next episode.